Leaders around the world are preparing themselves for Donald Trump's return. Some countries are worried, including traditional U.S. allies and, of course, America's enemies. But there are also other feelings going around, like hope and even excitement. So let's look at some of these reactions, starting with Russia. Here's what Russian President Vladimir Putin said. First of all, I can tell you, his behavior at the moment of the attempt on his life impressed me. He turned out to be a courageous man. A person shows himself in extraordinary circumstances. This is where a person shows himself. And he showed himself, in my opinion, in a very correct way, courageously like a man. I would like to take this opportunity to congratulate him on his election as President of the United States. I have already said that we will work with any head of state that the American people have given them the mandate. This will indeed be the case in practice. Putin has made his first public remarks on Trump's victory. He began by praising Donald Trump, calling him courageous for reacting the way he did after the attempt on his life. Putin then congratulated Trump on his election win and said that he would be willing to work with the incoming U.S. president. Basically, Putin is open to resetting ties with the United States, but the ball is in Trump's court. Russia is waiting to see what he does once he takes office. And Putin isn't the only American adversary who reacted this way. There was also Venezuelan president Nicolas Maduro. We did not do well in the first administration of re-elected President Donald Trump. It is a new beginning for us to bet on winning-winning and for the United States and Venezuela to do well. We always advocate for Latin America and the Caribbean to do well. As much as there have been tensions in relations when they tried to attempt against Trump's life twice, I do not hesitate for a second to express my solidarity and wish him good health and a long life. Maduro acknowledged that he did not share a good relationship with Trump, not during his first term anyway. The two were at loggerheads. Trump exerted massive pressure on Venezuela, hoping for Maduro's ouster. But despite this, Maduro sees this as a new beginning, a new win-win relationship with Donald Trump. Maduro also mentioned the assassination attempts. He expressed solidarity with Trump and wished him a long life. It's quite the shift in tone. So both Russia and Venezuela are looking for a reset. Now look at the third reaction from Argentina. I congratulate President-elect Donald Trump for the great victory in the elections held yesterday. You know that you can count on Argentina to make the United States great again, and we know that we can count on you to make Argentina great again. I wish you the greatest success, success and blessings, long live freedom. That was Javier Millet, the president of Argentina. Millet could not be happier with this result. He had backed Trump from the very beginning. Millet sees him as a natural ally, so he's thrilled. And he isn't even waiting for Trump's inauguration. He's flying to the U.S. next week to meet Donald Trump at his Mar-a-Lago residence and congratulate him in person. Joining them will be a mutual friend, Elon Musk. Musk has backed both these leaders, so he may be able to help strengthen ties. That's what Javier Millet will be hoping anyway. It seems there are good days ahead for Argentina. Another leader thrilled about Trump is Hungarian Prime Minister Viktor Orban. Last month, Orban said that he would celebrate Trump's victory with several bottles of champagne. Yesterday, he gave an update. I only partially kept my promise. We also opened champagne, but I was in Kyrgyzstan when Donald Trump won. But there the customs are different. That's why we happily tapped the vodka set together, being happy with this fantastic result. Orban was hosting a summit yesterday, a summit of the European political community. Hungary was, has the European Union's rotating presidency right now. Now EU leaders were meeting to discuss the US election and decide on what Europe should do next. Most EU leaders were worried. But Orban was not. He didn't even try to hide his excitement. Orban has been at odds with most of Europe for a while now. He has opposed the war in Russia, the excessive dependence on the US and a number of other policies. His outlook is more aligned with Trump than Europe. Now, this was a weakness in the past, but now Orban's influence is set to increase. So obviously, he, he was quite happy. But the rest of Europe definitely is not. They know that things are about to change. Like many, I had the opportunity yesterday to speak to the president-elect Donald Trump, some of us around this table know him from four years ago in his previous position. I congratulated him, but basically I think that our role here, in the European Union, 
is not to comment on the election of Donald Trump, to wonder if it is good or not. The question is are we ready to defend the interests of Europeans? That is the only question that we should ask ourselves. And for me, I think that is our priority. Europe is preparing for less help from the US, maybe no help in the Ukraine war. Trump says he wants the war to end. Europe does not want Russia to gain territory, so it wants to keep backing Kiev. But will they be able to? We'll probably see soon enough. Trump's victory has shaken up the world. Old foes are hoping for resets. Old allies are preparing to go it alone. And only one thing is certain at the moment. Nothing can be taken for granted. Hello and welcome to this special edition of Vantage, live from the White House. America is Trump country again. He will be the 47th president of the United States of America. They're live from the White House, soon to be the new residence of Donald Trump. It was also here that Donald Trump brokered the Abraham Accords. So the voters have a legitimate question in their minds. If those presidents could do it, why not Joe Biden? The Arab voters want to punish the Democrats for supporting Israel. Joe Biden's shadow looms large over this election and Kamala Harris may end up paying the price for it. This Trump hat, it says, President Trump save America. But this hat is made in China. And this is the Chinese interference that Americans must be investigating. But off late, Donald Trump and the Republicans have made some gains. And the biggest reason for that is illegal immigration. This is more than just a march, they say. This is a demand for accountability. The excitement, the tension is palpable. You can see the security presence. You can see the number of police cars, government buildings like these again, again fenced up. We are at Harvard University, the alma mater of Kamala Harris. As the night progressed, uh, numbers came in thick and fast, and Donald Trump was soon declared the winner. It's been called a historic comeback. Another American presidency will begin. In Donald Trump's case, his second one.